But here's a reality check with Michael Jordan. Do you know what his record was in the playoffs before Scottie Pippen arrived? Oh, I do. One in nine swept twice. Three quarters of the season, as Boston was struggling, I still was like, look, Milwaukee, Toronto, Boston are all on the same level. He seemed to be getting the same calls in the regular season on the three-pointers. In this game, early, he didn't. Chris Broussard here, and welcome to the brand new Hoops on Fox podcast. This podcast will give you your daily dose of all things NBA from Fox Sports, including the best content from Skip and Shannon, Nick Wright, plus special guests, fresh NBA content from myself, post-game interviews from NBA stars around the league, and much, much more. Up first, Chris Broussard joins Skip and Shannon to break down the Celtics' game one thumping of the Bucks. Chris, you have been high on the Bucks. Have All I? season long. <laughs> we haven't forgotten. Yep. So how much trouble is Milwaukee in? Well, as somebody who picked them in six in this mm. series, they're in more trouble than I expected. Mm. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Look, all season long, well, for three quarters of the season, as Boston was struggling, I still was like, look, Milwaukee, Toronto, Boston are all on the same level. Either of them could win the East. And then toward the end of the season, like the last month when Boston didn't turn it around, still had their problems, I wrote them off. I said, they can't beat Milwaukee or Toronto. Yep. Now Boston has apparently sw- flipped the switch. Mm-hmm. And this is the team that most people expected to see throughout the season. Mm-hmm. And I think they're capable of beating Milwaukee, Toronto, Houston. I'm not sure yet about Golden State, but I think they're right there with those teams. Now, I'm not saying they will beat those teams, Hmm. but they're capable. I'm still with Milwaukee. I still feel good about them. But this is gut check time for Giannis Adetokounmpo and Mike Budenholzer, both of them. Giannis is probably going to be the MVP. He was my vote. And this game yesterday kind of reminded me in a different way, obviously, of game two with – Kevin Durant and Patrick Beverly. Hmm. How Beverly did this uh, I- incredible job guarding him and, and it looked like he had really found out an answer to mm-hmm. stop Kevin Durant. Now, Kevin Durant answered in a big way. He obviously, since then, he's been off the charts. Let's see if Giannis can do that. Now, in fairness to him, he didn't get any help. Not from his other starters. Brooke Lopez, Eric Bledsoe, Sterling Brown. They were like, Three for 17 combined. Mm -hmm. Didn't produce any points. Middleton didn't have his usual type of game with only 16 points. The bench gave him something, but he's going to need more from his other guys. Budenholzer as well. He was out coached. When when and and Budenholzer's probably going to be coach of the year. The the coaches voted him coach of the year. He he again got my vote. But Brad Stevens out coached him yesterday. When the opponent comes into your building and shoots 54% and you are the best defense in the league, they made some adjustments. You just stood pat and didn't. And now it's time for Budenholzer to make the adjustments. Remember a few years ago when Atlanta won 60 right. and then the Cavs swept them. Right. And we gave Budenholzer, and I think rightly, a pass because he didn't have stars. Obviously, the Cavs had LeBron and Kyrie and all that. He won't get a pass this time. You've got the star in Giannis. Mm -hmm. I think the talent is close. Maybe you give Boston a slight edge, maybe. But the talent is close. So it's gut check time for those two guys. And obviously, game two is a must win. I agree. Uh, You hate to say they're in trouble. Um, They go down 0-2, they're in big trouble. They'll probably get swept. Skip, Giannis, and this is the the reason why when I look at Giannis, he has to take another step. Because if he couldn't get to the rim, you see what happened. They forwarded him off. They said, you're not getting to the rim. And when he got to the rim, Al Horford says, I'm challenging everything. If you put me on a poster, you put me on a poster. But I'm not giving you any dunks without you being challenged. Mm. And all of a sudden, Mm. now you're looking at him, he's 7 or 21. Mm -hmm. And like you say, he's going to have to trust. Well, how am I going to trust Brooke Lopez, Sterling Brown, Eric Bledsoe? They 3 or 17 with 12 points. I can't trust that. I needed Middleton to give me a little more because the Celtics got great contribution. They got uh, Jason Tatum didn't play particularly well. Al Horford was magnificent yesterday. Kyrie was Kyrie. Jalen Brown. Gordon Hayward stepped up. Terry Rozier. The guys that the, the, the Celtics were counting on, they showed up and they showed out. Hmm. Especially Al Horford. Al Horford on the defensive end, Skip, he's their, I believe he's their second best player. He's their second most important player because the pick and pop, he can pick and roll. He sets very good strength screens and he's a very, very good defender. As Giannis, 
Is he a very good defender? He was fantastic. Because that's what teams have been doing. They've been putting their big guy on Giannis, daring him to shoot from outside. Well, they put uh, 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 Rudy Gobert, he goes by Rudy Gobert, dunks it. They put Joel Embiid on him, he, he up fakes Joel Embiid, he goes by him and dunks. Al Horford said, nah, I ain't taking the bait. Go ahead, if you want to shoot them threes, have at them, because I don't believe you're Steph Curry. Mm. I don't believe you can make enough to make me come hug up on you and you go by me. Mm. They got their work cut out. Mm. They better not lose this next one, Chris. They lose this next one, somebody's going to be in a heap of trouble. Mm. And Giannis, you know, hey, Giannis, <laughs> you might want to rethink that. Because you lose this next game, you'll have plenty of time to film uh, uh, with LeBron James. Oh, really? Because you won't be busy. <laughs> Space Jams 2 is he, back on he, the table. He does not do Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, hey, no. and clearly he don't win playoff games either. So if you don't win well, this game... We're going to see. We shall see. You lose game two, Skip Bayless. Yeah. Hey, LeBron, Giannis will be joining you. So my first takeaway from after the game was... Suddenly, Kyrie Irving is happy. He's oh, just yeah. happy. <laughs> He's so happy. Uh, this could throw a monkey wrench in some offseason plans, He's right? He's happy. He's feeling great. He's happy with his teammates, and his teammates are probably, like, grudgingly happy with him <laughs> because he's really playing. And I, he had a career-high 11 assists. Right, right. right. Way to go. And my other takeaway was, I've told you from the start, I just need to see Giannis do it at the highest yep, level. Come play yep, up. And, and this is not the highest, but it's pretty high. Yeah. These are home games after you swept a team you should have swept, but, but these are home games against a legitimate contender. And you came up small yesterday. Yep. In the double block, he didn't by, play six eleven. No, well, he did not. But that, I was shocked the, that those the blocks. double block by yeah. Orford, but they were they were both bad ideas from Giannis. You can't just shoot it right in his face because the first one's just <laughs> right in his face, and he ate that one. If we can see it, and then he, I think it's coming later. Whoops, uh, yeah. that's another one. I mean, dude, I mean, it may seem like Al Horford six four, Al Horford six ten. <laughs> Giannis doesn't have hey. tremendous moves because no, he, he hadn't had not. to at that height. So the Celtics blocked 11 shots yesterday. Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart, and Al Horford each blocked three shots. That's a lot of blocking going on yes. in, in the house of blocks, you know, that, <laughs> right. where, where Giannis usually just terrorizes the, the visiting team. And, again, Giannis had by far the worst plus minus on the floor. He was a minus 24. And he didn't get much help, but but again, they're all waiting for him to go, and then they right. feed off him. They've been right. feeding yeah. off him all year. Do they miss Malcolm Brogdon? Yes, they do, because he is a hellacious perimeter defender, just a tough guy. Is he going to make it back this series? They say he's shooting. I, I don't know. It sounds iffy whether he's going to be able to play. And they're going to need him, because... Once Boston lost Marcus Smart, it somehow clarified the rotation. Right. All of right. a sudden, it all fell into place the way it wasn't before. Listen, Terry Rozier comes off the bench just lighting it up. He, he had nine rebounds yesterday. That just, you know, every time he comes in, I'm like, he can play. Yep. And we saw he could play last year. Yep. Yeah. And somehow he and Kyrie have kind of made peace with their minutes right. and their the threat factor both ways. So all of a sudden, like you said, switch got flipped. And I would expect Milwaukee to win game two, but they have to win game two. This is do or die. You hate saying the game two is a must win, but but it's a must win on your home court. You know what? When I listen to Kyrie, the thing that I love love about Kyrie and what I'm starting to see, I see growth. Because he knows, he said it, I can get my shot anytime. Mm -hmm. I can get whatever I want. I can get anywhere I want. If I want to get to the rim, Mm -hmm. I can get there. If I want to pull up in the mid-range, I can get there. Mm -hmm. If I want to shoot the three, I can get there. It's all about not alienating. Mm. So he has to find the fine line. Do I go take over and then these guys don't have a rhythm? Yep. It was like, okay, I got going early. Okay, now let me get my guys a rhythm. They need me again. Let me get going again. Okay, now let me find them a rhythm. Because 11 assists, Kyrie? For him? 11 assists? What I see in Kyrie is I've been watching this all year. He he see he really is following in LeBron James's footsteps. Mm-hmm. Like during the regular season, there was drama. Uh-huh. A lot of it created by him, right? Yep. And then come postseason, flip a switch, everything's good, and now they're rolling. Like he, he really seems to be following in LeBron's footsteps. He, he does. Yeah. And now the two besties, Kyrie and KD, are both very happy all of a sudden, right? Yeah. And they're both yeah. dominating at the same time. I don't know if that speaks well for them to stay or, or listen, if they both go somewhere together, they're going to take this league over. Mm. No question. And look, Kyrie, 
I, I hope, just for as a fan, yeah. and I would love to see KD and Kyrie go to New York. But Kyrie's in a great – Just for the league, it'd be, it'd be great. And it was yeah. spread out the towel and all right. that. Yeah. But Kyrie is in a phenomenal situation. Phenomenal. I mean, you got a great organization, a great supporting cast, great coach. You know, he's a superstar. And they probably will get Anthony Davis if, if he stays. Like – it's a, it's, it'd be a lot for him to leave. KD, I just think Golden State, I think it, it, this might be their last run just because of the mental. Nine, it's nine, mentally nine. taxing yep. to keep going to the finals. But uh, we'll see. Isn't that wild, though, that we're talking about one game and the whole regular season was kind of a disaster for the Celtics, yet now they figured it out. Right. And he said they would. Well, this is why with Milwaukee, why I picked Toronto to beat them in the conference finals. We'll mm. see if they get there, but – because of the lack of experience. Mm-hmm. None of these guys, Giannis, none of them have to have this type of experience. Yeah. So let's see how they respond. And you can understand Toronto, because you saw what that old boy, ooh, yeah, he's boy, that number special. two. Who, Siaka? I, oh, I know they miss him down south. Yeah, they, <laughs> I know they would, first of all, they would not have been a game seven. If, right, if and they wouldn't have been a seven seed. No. Well, who, who knows that he would have even played? Oh, he's played. <laughs> Huh? That is All you got to do is let him miss know. 20 games. Wait, it took him two years to get healthy just recently. He finally said, I'm healthy. Yeah. He, ain't fully, he, he ain't fully healthy yet. He still really? missed 20 games. Oh, really? But them, 20, but them other 62 that he played. Huh. <sighs> well, I'm here to tell Chris Broussard <laughs> the Bucks are done. They're oh, done. You, They're done. You're going full Paul yeah. Pierce. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Done. Yeah. Hey, they're just done. done. So they're going to get swept? They're not. They, they won't get swept. I expect them to win five. two, but they're not going to win three or four. So you, so you get them with five. I just think the Celtics have. It's it's just some mindset. It's it's just we're the Celtics huh. and you're not. I got another case of do they don't lose in five. I think the Bucks stop here. I got a case of do they yeah. don't lose in five. Hmm. Well, to Losing your point, five, I mean I Tatum think. struggled, so yeah. they can even look at that and say we didn't even get a good game yeah. out of Tatum. Interesting. You know, I, I'll take Boston right now for a case, just straight up for a case. You do it. Well, oh, they got a one-game lead. You going to talk about, oh, you take Toronto for a case. No. Well, you love Milwaukee. I take Toronto right uh, now for a case. Oh, wow. That's going way out on the oh, oh, but you want to take both. I'm both like Philly, right? Well, Joel and B. They can't. done? He, he well, Joel, Joel paying 12 minutes a night. He can't move. Well, remember, I know Horford. for a fact he should not even be playing Joel and B. Should not be playing right now. So they got no shot without him. No. And this is what Horford – remember Horford did a great job on NBA last year in the he playoffs. Did. That guy's a great defender. He is. Smart. Okay. Little, oh, wow. Okay. That's we, my new fave. We got oh, a different he? game to talk about. Really? Did uh. you say new favorite? Really? New fave. He in my fave. Past uh, – He's just saying. You said new fave, yeah. number one. No, 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 no. Okay. He my, no, my I'm five. Just asking. You know, T Mobile got that thing. You know, you He's got five. He's in your new fave. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, you, I thought oh, you, you think he's going in front of LeBron? I, I was just clarifying. He's no, in you, you were, I was you were just, right. right. I was clear. He right. said new he's fave. He's jumped completely off that bandwagon. <laughs> no. He is. Okay. Out of Rod, sight, out of mind. LeBron ain't going nowhere. Yeah, he, that is true. He's going nowhere. LeBron, oh, you got jokes, huh? Yeah. Okay. Next, Nick and CeCe examine the non-calls in Game 1 of the Rockets' Warriors. All right, CC, is James Harden right to be upset with the officiating in this game? Well, the officiating was not consistent. You know, typically, the, um, you listen to referees that are, are part of the shows and part of the telecast, and they talk about there is no regular season referee and, and postseason referee, and that's, that's just not true. They can't admit it to the public, but the style for which they're going to play, how NBA players play defense in the postseason is totally different. And the refs typically call it. Now, as far as the three-point shooting, we saw last year Harden didn't get as many calls in the playoffs as he did during the regular season. Thus far, he seemed to be getting the same calls in the regular season on the three-pointers. In this game, early, he didn't. And if you look at late in the game, the last one with Draymond, I thought Draymond could have gone to the side. Harden was going a little more forward and forced his legs into Draymond. But that's at the end of the game. And they hadn't called that on Klay Thompson and a couple other Warriors during the game. So typically, as a player, you say, okay, the referee is going to be consistent throughout the game. So at the end of the game, he shouldn't have expected that call. But how they called the three-point shooting, not letting the Rockets land was a huge advantage for Warriors. the Warriors in this game, and it was totally different than what they had called during the regular season against Harden and other jump shooters. And when you saw the coach and Chris Paul and James Harden after the game, their frustrations boil over, the context here matters. 
The, you know how we get those end-of-game final two-minute reports? Well, the individual teams can get those reports for the full 48 minutes. And in last year's Western Conference Finals, the Warriors got the officiating edge, according to the NBA's own data, in six of the seven games. The Warriors were plus over 90 points in the Western Conference Finals that went seven games last year and had an enormous edge in games five, six, and seven. So that was the Rockets' feeling when they didn't win last season. Then do you remember this year, the play in January 3rd, Rockets-Warriors, when Kevin Durant is five steps out of bounds? Mm -hmm. to, probably the worst missed call in the season all year. Now the Rockets end up winning on a wild James Harden three, but that still happened. And now, first half, first game, your whole season's been building to this. And the refs tell you, we missed at least four of them. That was 10 free throws, not 12, because one of them Harden made the three. Mm -hmm. That's 10 free throws the Rockets were deprived of that the rules say they should have gotten. And there's an element of, see, are the officials, are the officials different in the postseason, or are they just older? Because one of the things Houston believes is, and they think they have the data to back it up, is the officials who have been in the league longer to where this was not a point of emphasis, the landing space, are less likely to call it than the younger officials. In the in the play, playoffs, you get veteran officiating crew, crews, and they s seem to be going against it. But whatever the reason, the Rockets have now played eight critical postseason games the last two years against the Warriors. And the Warriors have got a clear and obvious edge in the officiating in seven of the eight. In, in a series that you said it when you walked in this morning. It's a missed opportunity for Houston. A win there would have been enormous. And mm -hmm. they should have, ex I don't want to say expected it, but given how Steph played, given how Clay played, given that the Warriors had less than 48 hours rest, they could have won that game and stolen home court advantage. And they feel like the refs took that opportunity from them. One point against that argument is that the refs in game admitted to the coaches and the players. So they're the same older refs. They admitted during the game that they had missed the calls. If it was after the game and they had missed those calls and the refs hadn't said anything, then I might be able to look back to the theory of, oh, well, maybe it's the older refs because this is a, a rule that's been in the last couple postseasons. No, so the thing, it was a great opportunity, and that's one part of the game. Golden State and how they played basketball, too, that should be part of the conversation, too, because the refs didn't take the game away. It's just one of the storylines looking to the result with Golden State not playing a great game, Steph being injured, Clay being injured, and them being able to summon up some type of strength less than 48 hours after clinching against the Clippers in L.A. to be able to get named game number one. That should be the storyline because I believe that game number one, you know, to steal a win, Golden State, I believe will be the difference in the series. This is the way the Rockets play. This is what they count on. They count on being able to, to make that shot and to get that call. If the refs don't change the way they're calling this series, do the Rockets have a chance? Well, if the refs start ignoring the rule on fouling three-point shooters, no, the Rockets will be in real, real trouble. I mean, they you can't... They, I think everyone believes this is going to be a very close series or it has the potential to be a very close series. And if you're talking about the Rockets believe last night they missed eight of these foul calls. The refs reportedly admitted to missing four in the first half. If you're talking about taking away 15 to 20 free throw opportunities, then no, nobody would be able to overcome that. And for people to think, oh, they'll get it right, they'll get it back in game, in game two, Last year, the NBA apologized for the Game 5 officiating, and then the Warriors had the edge in Game 6. They apologized for both of those, and then the Warriors had the biggest edge of the series in Game 7. During that 0 for 27 streak, there were multiple times that the NBA's own data says, oh, they fouled him on a three-point shot. And so this just it's just what's so odd to me is you would think if there would be any team that wouldn't get the benefit of the doubt from the officials, it would be the, Golden the State Warriors. with the way they treat the officials with Draymond and KD's technicals, but that hasn't been the case when these two teams have been head-to-head. -head. Um, I'll say this again. The refs were part of the storyline, but they had nothing to do with Clint Capella, why he didn't show up to the game. It had nothing to do with P.J. Tucker, why he had to, 0 for 4 and 30, 39 minutes of playing, got zero points. So, yeah, we can sit here and blame it on the ref, 7-8 line. But in this game, the Rockets had a chance to win the game on the court. Harden had the ball in his hand. He decides to take a three-pointer contested by Draymond. He didn't have to take that three-pointer. He could have taken it to the bucket. There was still time to build. Like, Or if he's the MVP of the league, he can also make that shot. 
He'll call that a good shot. That was a better look than Damian Lillard had to knock down the bill to get them to the bill to advance. So I think there were still more opportunities and more with the X's and O's and what they didn't do. And the Warriors starting making a lineup adjustment, putting the Hampton Five, starting them out there. That was as, just as important if you want to talk about the referee. And there's other things we should be able to talk about, to which led the Warriors to get in game number one. There's no doubt that the Rockets officiating aside are going to look at the missed corner threes, P.J. Tucker and others. The inefficiency from what not just P.J. Tucker, but also Daniel House when he had his opportunities. Iman Shumper getting a bigger role mm-hmm. because Austin Rivers was out. Clint Capella not being able to take advantage of the he took two shots. Shots. Mismatch, right. Yeah. Like when they you start the Hamptons 5, you would think that Harden pick and roll lob would be there. It wasn't there the entire game. And Gerald Green played seven minutes, and the Rockets were outscored by 16 points in the seven minutes he was on the court. They maybe should have learned the lesson from last year's playoffs against this team. Gerald Green's a tough matchup against Golden State. So they had other opportunities, but all those things notwithstanding, this is a, now a theme for them going on the second straight year in the playoffs against this team. Now Rick Buger joins Jason McIntyre to go over their current top 10 players in the NBA. Does this series, and I know it's just four, five games, does it cement Damian Lillard as a top 10 player in the NBA? <laughs> no. I mean, as what? Of, for anybody as of right now, yes. In Prisoners, Prisoners of, of the Moment. Prisoners yes. of the Moment, okay. yes. Go ahead, throw him in your top 10. He's a top 10 player. You know what? He's the best point guard I've ever seen. He's amazing. All right, Rick, 20-second timeout. Hold on. A lot of people are going to vote him as second-team All-NBA point guard, right? Yeah. Uh, that would put him in the top ten. If, if you're looking at Curry and Harden as the first team, Kyrie and Dame as the second team. No, I no, because it's position. It's position. He can be fair. He can be the third or fourth best guard point or guard. point guard and not necessarily be a top okay, ten I'll player. I'll press you on especially, it. Especially because if, you lo- if you're looking at guys like Kevin Durant and Kawhi Automatic. and... Giannis, and you've got okay. any number of point forwards that are going to be in that top so 10. So let's quickly rattle through it. Okay, okay. Giannis, we both have top 10. James yes. Harden, top 10. Yes. Kevin Durant. To- oh, top 10. Yes. Steph Curry. Yes. LeBron. Yes. Okay, so that's five. Yes. Kawhi Leonard. Let's put him to the Ooh. side right now. Ooh. Okay, I have him top 10. Uh, uh, you know what? I take that back. Put him in. in. Go ahead. Put him Kyrie in. Irving would be seven. Put him... In. Okay. Now we're getting down to what I think is the tough area. Yes. Paul George is probably going to be the he's third. In. He's okay, in. Okay, he's in. Good. He's in. Joel Embiid. I have him in. Oh. You taking Joel in. Embiid to build your team around over Damian Lillard? I know it's simply sep- kind of a different question, it, but in a guard wing league. Yes, but there's so much that Joel Embiid can do. He can. He has range. My greatest concern about building around Joel Embiid, and somehow, how did we go from our top ten to guys that we would build around? Or are we yeah, saying? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's I what mean, top ten. There's is. a distinction because yeah, no, no, that's because good. this is the thing that that Philadelphia is going to have to face. Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid cannot co- coexist on a championship team. We agree on yeah. that, right? You're going to have to make a decision between those two. Yeah. If it's talent. There's no question. Joel Embiid is the guy that I keep, and I move Ben Simmons. But there's, but a, fa- there's, there's a big there's but the, there. There's yeah. the health factor. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, Joel Embiid, for his age, the fact that he's already sitting out games with sore knees and a sore back. like you can't do back-to-back seasons like his fifth year in the league. Exactly. Yeah. Can I count on that? So, But if it's just a matter of talent, when you're the best player at your position – and he is, when healthy, the best player Ooh. at his position. Uh, I think I hear somebody at the door. Anthony Davis is knocking. What? Wants to know how first you do all, not have three-time All-NBA first-team player, Anthony Davis, who a year ago, first-team All-NBA, first-team All-Defense, and now Anthony Davis because he missed like 26 games. He's chopped liver, Rick. Oh, wait a minute. How, which year are we talking about that he missed 26 r- games? Because he's year, missed, a lot, he has missed a, lot a lot of games and a lot of seasons. He's had some injury issues. You Anthony gotta have him top ten. No, I've always mm. had this issue with Ant- AD is not in my top ten. AD really? Is, AD might not be in my top fifteen. I am not. All right, all right. Do we have look, to stop down here? No, no, I mean, no. Come look, on. Anthony talent, Davis not top fifteen. Talent wise, and this is kind of the distinction when we get into the Damian Lillard conversation, because there are so many intangibles that Damian brings to the table: his leadership, his his dedication to the trailblazers and I know that yeah. sounds no, kind of quaint that's important right now but the fact of the matter is like he's brought that team together and this goes back to his AAU days 
he was on the Oakland Rebels. They were the team that wasn't sponsored. They were the team that had to have bake sales and sell beef <laughs> jerky. And they had to do all kinds of things to scrounge up the money to go to tournaments. The Oakland Soldiers were the team. They were the big that, team. Yes, they yes. were the Nike sponsored team. LeBron came in and played for remember them. Remember Leon Powell? Uh, po, yes, po, uh, yes. Yeah, I remember yes. him covering high school basketball back in the day. Exactly. Now, Damien will tell you the Soldiers didn't want him. <laughs> the Soldiers will say, no, Damien could have come played for us. But he didn't want to. Nobody wanted. He went bottom, to Weaver State. Yeah. Bottom line is he stayed with the Rebels. Yeah. And they eventually played a tournament where they beat the soldiers. He stayed with the group of his friends that he grew up playing with. And he's always had that mentality that, you know what, if I stay with, if I stay loyal, if we stay together, our continuity and our dedication to each other will trump pure talent. So what we saw and what we've seen with these trailblazers is mm -hmm. something that Damian Lillard has basically built his entire career on. And that's where, that's one of those intangibles that when yeah. you get to the NBA, it's still about yeah. talent. You it's can't still quantify about, that, really. Yeah, the but physicality, let it's me, about all those Let me things. add one quick note. So I do have Dame top 10. I would take him over Kawhi Leonard right now. I think he's got that killer mentality at the end of games. Well, you think Kawhi doesn't? I don't know that he does. He played with the Spurs where he was second banana to Tim Duncan. He played I, with the greatest coach. Mm. I need to see what he does in the Sixer series. I'm discounting the Orlando Magic who tried to defend him with Jonathan Isaac well, he's gonna, and he's Aaron gonna, Gordon. Like, no. the, the Jimmy first, Butler, Kawhi Leonard is going to be a show next round. I like Butler a lot. The first I would put round, him in contention for top 10, Jimmy Butler. Yeah, the first round matchups. I mean, you're also going to see, you're probably going to see uh, Kawhi Leonard on Ben Simmons yes. a great deal. And Kawhi Leonard has fun. eaten Ben Simmons' lunch. No, ben Simmons is 22, Rick. Right? Come on, let's, I, I'm a big Simmons guy, but uh, wait, one but last that's, but one. See, that's, but that's where, that's where Kawhi is good. Kawhi is good as a, he's a great two-way player. My concern with him is not that he's not a closer. I think he's happy to have the ball at the end and take the shot. It's that does he make everybody better? Is he a playmaker mm. or is he really kind of an isolationist where if I tell him to stop this guy, he can stop that guy. If I tell him to go score on this guy, he can score on this guy. But if I ask him to blend what you're doing can with the rest of the team, can he do that? Because he started his career as a blender in San Antonio. L let me just remind everybody, Anthony Davis a year ago at this time yes. swept Damian Lillard out. Now he had help from Holiday. Oh, wait, 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 all right, and the difference in that series was Rajon Rondo and Drew Holiday swallowed up C.J. McCollum and Damian Lillard. And C.J. McCollum and Damian Lillard came back this year and said, we have a problem playing against big guards. I mean, let's be honest. I am not giving that series to A.D. A.D. I, I was mean, not I, the difference maker. I the in fact, in front this of me. Holiday year, was tremendous. This was. year, you know who the best player on that team was, even when A.D. was there? You know who it was. Mm. You know who it Julie, was. Don't tell me you're going to say Julius Randle. Okay. <laughs> no, no, Just no, make no. it sure. No. Okay. Mr. Holiday. Yeah. Yes. He, was, he was phenomenal. Yes. Yeah. He was at the end of games. You talk about being a closer. Okay. That's my problem with AD. AD, right. talent-wise, I would agree with you. Is he a top 10 talent? Yes, because he's a great two-way player athletically. But he, I'm putting him in that Tracy yeah. McGrady camp of a guy who is a phenomenal talent as a basketball player. Is he 26? But at this point, he still doesn't know to, right, how to yeah, apply I can see it. the headlines now. Rick Buger, Anthony Davis is not a top 15 player. Oof. Following, Colin Coward explains why Giannis needs the help before he can be a championship contender. My favorite NBA reality check for all the Michael Jordan worshipers out there. Many of you in your 20s and 30s didn't even watch him play live. I saw every series and every playoff game he ever played. He's the greatest player probably in league history. Uh, LeBron, I think, at his prime was close. I think Magic in his prime was very close. But here's a reality check with Michael Jordan. Do you know what his record was in the playoffs before Scottie Pippen arrived? Oh, I do. One in nine. Swept twice. What up, bruh? Doesn't fall in line with all your MJ worship. One in nine. He was crappy in the playoffs. Swept twice. Because what we do in basketball, especially the NBA, we glom onto the star and we think the star decides everything. If that was the case, then Kevin Durant would have won the West every single year. But his number two was unreliable, Westbrook. And LeBron has only had great success when he's got an all star as his number two, Kyrie, Wade, or Bosch. Michael Jordan didn't do anything in this league except score.
He didn't do anything in the postseason until he got Scottie Pippen, one of the best 50 players of all time. We pay attention to the one, and the ones are key, but ones don't win in this league without a two. It's why I never bought into Denver, why I think the Raptors have limitations, and why I didn't buy into Milwaukee over Boston. I'll take Boston narrowly. If you look at the greatest team in league history, it's probably the Bulls in 95. The second best player was Pippen, a top 50 player. Second best team I've ever seen is the Warriors. Their second best player, Steph Curry, the only unanimous MVP in league history. The third best team I've ever seen, maybe the second best, is the Showtime Lakers. Magic, the second best player was Kareem. <laughs> probably the best center in league history. By the way, Shaq and Kobe's probably the third or fourth best team I've ever seen. Whichever you preferred, it was a Hall of Famer, was the second best player. The Milwaukee Bucks' second best player is Chris Middleton. He's a hard worker and a good kid. But he played college for three years. Translation, it's not that gifted. Then he went to the NBA, rookie year, averaged six points, and was demoted to the Fort Wayne Mad Ants. He has become a very good player. But if he's your number two, if he's your Pippen, if he's your Kobe, if he's your Steph, you're not winning the title. And I don't think you're winning this series. Now, Boston doesn't have a dominating number two either. But let's just, for the sake of argument, take Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum was a high school All-American and then a college All-American and only had to play one year of college at the best program, Duke, and then NBA people said, get out of college, you're too good. Oh, and then as a rookie, made the All-Rookie team and in the playoffs was actually shockingly good as a rookie. He didn't get demoted to the Fort Wayne Mad Ants. Now, he's not one of the stronger twos in NBA history. But he is a transformational basketball talent who's still a baby. Now, you can argue Al Horford's a two and Gordon Hayward's a two or Jason Tatum's a two. I would say Tatum is their second best basketball talent. That's why I think this is a close series. The Houston Rockets' number two player is a nine-time All-Star and a first ballot Hall of Famer, Chris Paul. And why the Warriors are going to win their number two is Steph Curry, <laughs> maybe the most transformational basketball player of my life outside of LeBron, Magic, and MJ. Nothing against Chris Middleton, but the reason I took Boston in this series was their two is a four, or at best a three, Chris Middleton. I like him. He's not a two. Jason Tatum has nights he's an absolute two, and I think long term, he's absolutely a two. He didn't play particularly well in game one. But we, we spend so much time looking at the one. Kevin Durant got to one finals in the West before Golden State. Because he and the two didn't work. Look at the dynasty in our lifetimes. One of them, Spurs. Tony Parker was an MVP candidate, and he was a two to Duncan. Then they switched, and then Duncan was the two and was a first ballot Hall of Famer. I can remember watching Larry Bird have back-to-back -back playoff games where he scored eight points, but they had a two named Kevin McHale who could score 24. It's not just about the one. Denver doesn't have Jamal Murray a dependable two. Chris Middleton should be a three or a four. They're not championship teams. Now, I don't think Boston has the best two in the world, but he is an absolutely elite basketball talent who, the reason Jason Tatum's not a one, he's too inconsistent. But on the night, he's good. Oh, he's really good. Thank you for listening to the Hoops on Fox podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a five-star review letting us know what you think of the show.